This episode of the Henderson Football Show is brought to you by Raw and Jim of Henderson. In fact, every episode of the Henderson Football Show in 2023 is brought to you by Raw and Jim of Henderson. And Logan has been sponsoring now for the third year. This will be the third year, or excuse me, the fourth year of Henderson Football, all because of Raw and Jim of Henderson and Logan Edmondson. And we do appreciate that. They're located at 2101 Highway 64 in Henderson. You can give them a call, 903-987-5858. You can find them online at rawandjimhenderson.com. You can also find them on Facebook. Just type in Raw and Jim of Henderson. And we've talked before about how at Raw and Jim of Henderson, it's not just about working out. It's a family atmosphere that they want to know your goals, and then they're going to help you try to get to those goals and strive for them. And when you achieve them, they're going to celebrate with you. Also, Logan knows it's not just about working out. As he says, nutrition is just as important as exercise when it comes to achieving your fitness goals properly. Proper nutrition is essential for achieving strength and muscle gains. And he backs that up because now at the gym, you can buy prepackaged meals. They're healthy. They're easy. And also, it's really easy to pay. You don't have to have cash. You walk in, you get the meal you want, and you cash app for it. So check out Raw and Jim of Henderson. Again, located at 2101 Highway 64 in Henderson. Here at L4 Media, we talk high school football, 4A, 3A, and 2A in Texas. We talk East Texas sports. We talk NFL, guy talk, movie, and booze. We also talk wrestling and so much more. And you can see it all on our YouTube channel at L4 Media Company. Like and subscribe. The Clay Baker era starts off with a victory. Hello, everybody. Terry Bennett here on the Raw Iron Gym of Henderson Henderson Football Show. Right here on the S2S Sports Network, part of L4 Media, as Henderson uses a ground game that gained 342 yards, a defense that created three turnovers, had six plays behind the line of scrimmage, and the Lions outlast the Leopards 28-14 to to see Henderson go to 1-0 and here on this 2023 season. Great way to start the, the era for Coach Baker and the Lions. A- against the Liberty Ilo team that's very, very young, and I think it's going to be very, very good down the road uh, but still great win for the Lions and of course we will be talking to Coach Baker about that and of course we'll also be talking to him about the game against Hallsville uh, you go from a 3A game in week one to you're about to have a run of three 5A uh, matchups against uh, Hallsville against Marshall against White House it's going to be a tough road, but I think this is a great launching point for the Lions. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, it is the head coach of the Lions, Coach Clay Baker, right here on the Raw and Gym of Henderson, Henderson Football Show on S2S Sports, part of L4 Media. Is your demanding work lifestyle in need of fire-resistant clothing that can keep up? Well, L4FR clothing should be your go-to for quality, affordability, safety, and style. L4FR was founded by a third-generation oil field worker who is also a veteran. Thus, this company has a deep appreciation for reliability and longevity, all while we provide first-rate customer service. Our durable apparel will serve you well for many years to come, whether you're working on a pipeline, a lineman climbing utility poles, or in any other environment requiring fire-resistant apparel. L4FR has you covered. Our apparel is tough enough to resist hazardous conditions while still providing high comfort and style. L4FR provides clothing options to ensure your safety and comfort, whether you're on the job or not. To view our complete inventory of flame-resistant garments, please visit our online store at L4FRclothing.com or give us a call at 817-757-4935. See habla espanol. Terry Bennett back here on the Raw Iron Gym of Henderson, Henderson Football Show. Now joined by the head coach of the Lions, Coach Clay Baker. And Coach, first off, congratulations at your first game as the head coach of the Lions and you get a win against a really good Liberty Ilo team. What were your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, it, it was exciting. Uh, it was good for our kids and, and our staff, you know, to get that, that first one out of the way, uh, kind of get over that hump there. Um, so, you know, our kids are really excited. They enjoyed it. Uh, We told them to celebrate big and enjoy it for the night, and then let's get ready to to get back to work Saturday. Offensively, 342 yards on the ground. You had 126 through the air. You had a couple of turnovers, but it's the first game. We always talk about that first game. You're going to have those kind of things. Uh, What did you think about your offense? 
Yeah, uh, you know, obviously, as you mentioned, we, we've got to clean up the turnovers. We had uh, way too many of those uh, that, that's going to impact us once we get a little farther down the road. But I, what I was proud of the most was the way that we handled the adversity. You know, we, we've talked to our guys ever since I got here about how are we going to handle adversity, you know, and what are we going to do to overcome that. And, I mean, having those turnovers was, was some pretty good adversity Friday night, and I think our guys reacted well. They continued to compete. Uh, you know, they continued to, to grind and trust in the coaches. Uh, so I was proud of the way they responded to that. And then up front, I was just, I was proud of our offensive line. I challenged those guys. I told them that that's the strength of our team on the offensive side of the ball, that we were going to hang our hat on the run game, and, and we were going to pound the rock behind them so to be ready. And those guys accepted that challenge and did a great job up front. You know, you bring up a great point about the adversity. And, and that's one of the things over the last few years with Henderson is, is when things were going good, Henderson would play good. And, and as you said, when they'd have a turnover, a couple penalties, a couple bad drives, then things just seemed to go south. Being in this game, seeing them trust your coaches, does that show you that the process you're installing is starting to work? Absolutely. Uh, you know, we were excited to see that. There, were, there was a, a few things we wanted to see. Uh, you know, we wanted to see the kids compete. You know, we wanted to see them get maximum effort regardless of what's going on on the scoreboard. Uh, we wanted to see positive attitudes all game, and then we wanted to see when they get hit in the mouth and get a little bit of adversity, how are they going to handle that? Uh, and and I, that was something we talked about as a staff uh, when we had staff meetings too. Uh, you know, I told the rest of the guys, uh, and I thought they did a good job that, you know, when we do hit that adversity, the kids are going to look at us. They're, they're going to see how we're handling it and how we're reacting. We got to continue to work. We we, we got to stay positive. We, we got to find a way to overcome it and continue to coach. And I think our staff did a good job of that as well. Uh, and the kids was kind of a reflection of that. One of the things that, that I was impressed with, and we talked about it when we interviewed you in the summer about the youth of this team, a junior cor a quarterback, a sophomore running back had 100 yards, another junior running back had 100 yards. Uh, that, that youth for Henderson, man, that, some people look at it as a negative, but, boy, that can be a big positive. No, absolutely, going forward. I mean, th those guys are going to get better each week. You know, that was a lot of them's first, first time to ever get under the Friday Night Lights, and that can be a big deal, you know. That can that can kind of be make some kids a little bit nervous the first time to get out there under the Friday night lights. But I thought they handled it well. I thought they got better as the game went on. Uh, same thing, you know, with Jordan Smiley at, at quarterback. You know, it was his first time to ever take snaps uh, at quarterback in a varsity football game, and I thought he handled the adversity well. And I thought he continued to get better, uh, just like the rest of them. You know, they're gonna they're gonna continue to make some mistakes, uh, but you know, they're, they're gonna learn from them and, and grow each week and continue to get better defensively uh you, you gave up a couple big plays but you also had a, a, a ton of, of impact plays i think it was five tackle for losses like two or three sacks three interceptions you talked about being aggressive on defense in this summer and, and you were very aggressive against liberty Allo. yeah credit credit to coach tamplin uh, and the defensive staff you know, those guys had a really good game plan going into it uh and we talk about the youth i mean we had three interceptions and two of those were from sophomores uh, who don't have any Friday night experience, you know, so that was big time plays from those guys. But, you know, offensively we put the, the defense in a, in a bad spot more than, more than a couple of times with the turnovers that we had. Uh, so the way that those guys handled that adversity, I thought, and, and they stayed positive. Never once did they put their heads down or, or get frustrated about having to go stay on the field for so long. You know, they just they had that bend, don't break mentality. Uh, they, they kept working regardless if there was a big play. Uh, and, and the main goal, you know, like I said, Ben don't break. It doesn't matter how many yards they get, what kind of plays they get, as long as we keep them out of the end zone. And I thought the guys did a good job of that. Uh, talking about last Friday, across the whole state, the heat was, of course, the big story. How did y'all seem to handle the heat? Did you think y'all handled it pretty well? I think so. Uh, you know, I mean, that second half, we did have some guys start cramping. Um, our training staff, credit to them, they did a good job. They had uh, they kept the guys hydrated through the week. They had liquid IVs and snacks, and, I mean, we had all kind of stuff. It was a buffet in our locker room at halftime, and we had fruit, granola bars, liquid IVs, Gatorades. We had everything available for them. Uh, so, you know, I, I, we appreciate those those guys, our training staff, and, and keeping the guys ready and hydrated and everything else. But, I mean, obviously it affected us a little bit, but um, – you know, we've got some pretty good depth, so uh, I, I think it it didn't affect us quite as much as it did the other team. All right, well, you move on 1-0. and You go from Liberty Ilo to 4A Hallsville, uh, a team last year, kind of like y'all, very young. They made the playoffs for the first time in four or five years. Looking at the film, what are your thoughts on the Bobcats? Yeah, uh, they, they look like they're coached really well. Uh, they have good discipline. 
they're very multiple on both sides of the football. Um, you know, a lot like us, they're, they're going to be multiple uh, offensively and defensively. They're going to give us a lot of different fronts on the, the defensive side. And then offensively, they do a lot of RPOs, run pass options, and their quarterback does a, a really good job of reading those as well. So, you know, I mean, we have we got a nice little stretch of three 5A teams in a row, and, and all three of them made the playoffs and had winning records last year. So we're, we're definitely going to get tested here these next three weeks. Yeah, these three weeks are what we talk about when we talk about that adversity and how your team responds. And not only do you have those three, but then you literally open district up with one of the nine four A Division One uh, favorites in Lindell. What do you preach to to your kids through this stretch? Yeah, I mean the the big focus. We're still a we're a young team as we talked about, and we're a, a new staff as well. So I mean the big thing for us right now, uh, especially in, in the first four non-district games, is is to continue to focus on ourselves. Now, I mean, we're going to game plan for everybody, and, and we're going to have specific stuff in each week uh, according to the game plan. But, I mean, the big thing for us is is watching ourselves, going back and watching practice film of ourselves, game film of ourselves, and continue to correct mistakes that we make and, and getting the kids exactly where we want them to get them uh, as far as alignment and, and the way that we're playing things. Uh, so just to – Continue getting better. Uh, continue, you know, also, I mean, with our young guys, you know, there's some things you can't practice, those in-game situations and how they handle those. So just getting them some experience there as well. How has practice been this week? It's been good. Uh, the energy's been good. Uh, you know, the kids are locked in. You know, they, uh, <clears throat> they're and they taking that momentum and riding into it. And I told them uh, after the game Friday, I said, look, we, we're going to celebrate big. You know, we, we celebrated probably a, a little bit more than you would for a, a first game non-district win, but I thought the kids deserved it. Uh, so, you know, I told them enjoy this, but, you know, after this one, we're going to get back to where this is the norm. You know, it, it's it's normal for Henderson to expect to win every Friday night. Uh, so we, we got to take that approach uh, starting every weekend on Saturday, preparing for a new team and, and getting ready to go back to work each Monday when we step on the practice field. You brought up a good point talking about not only young players and, and you know, this is your first time as a head coach at Henderson uh, and, and you have new staff and all. And one of the things I was talking with another coach and it was actually his very first time as a head coach was he talked about, you know, you don't think about the communication between coaches in the first week. And just like with players, y'all have to kind of learn each other and, and stuff. And, and how did that go? I, I thought it went really good. I thought it was about as smooth as it, as it could be. Um, getting a lot of live reps in the two scrimmages definitely helped us. We, through the scrimmages, we tweaked some things on who's going to be in the booth, who's not, um, who's got certain assignments and, and who's looking for certain things. So we, We've done a pretty good job as a staff of, of being prepared and, and having a plan and, and knowing who is looking for certain things and, and who's handling this and who's handling that. Uh, and I thought our guys did it. They did a great job of communicating with each other because you can plan and prepare all you want, but until you're thrown out there, just like the kids, coaches as well, uh, you never really know how you're going to handle it. So I, I was proud of our staff on how well they communicated through the game. Uh, after Friday, when you saw all the scores, did you did your eyebrows raise a little bit when you saw how close Kilgore kept it with Carthage? <laughs> I mean, I expected it to be a good game. Um, you know, I mean, you know, Carthage is a, a powerhouse in East Texas, uh, or in all of Texas. Uh, and Kilgore is—I mean, they're going to—they're going to compete with anybody they line up against. I mean, they've got one of the best teams in the state at our level. I feel like um, so. Not not much surprises me with our district. I mean, there's there's <laughs> from top to bottom. There's a lot of very good football teams. Here at L4 Media, we talk high school football, 4A, 3A, and 2A in Texas. We talk East Texas sports. We talk NFL, guy talk, movie, and booze. We also talk wrestling and so much more. And you can see it all on our YouTube channel at L4 Media Company. Like and subscribe. As always, I want to thank the head coach of the Lions, Coach Clay Baker, for joining us here on the Raw Iron Gym of Henderson Henderson Football Show. Want to remind everybody that we have us an East Texas show on the network. It's called The Beast from the East. You can check it out on our East Texas site. Uh, Brett Sweeney and the boys over there, netsn.live. It's also on our YouTube channel, at L4 Media. Uh, that's the YouTube channel. Just go to YouTube, search for that. As is our Sideline to Sideline 4A show, where Grant Goodwin and I each and every week talk high school football 4A for you Henderson fans, 3A and 2A, if you're just a fan of high school football in Texas or of East Texas, you know, we're going to be talking a lot of East Texas teams in those three shows as well. I um, mean, we have a whole litany of other regional shows, uh, district shows, coaches shows. So check them all out. 
uh, L4 Media, at L4 Media on YouTube, also at S2SGrantAndTerry.com and S2SSport.com. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments for me or for Coach Baker, you can email them to me, Terry, at S2SSport.com. And once again, we want to thank our title sponsor, Logan Edmondson and Raw Iron Gym of Henderson. We really appreciate them. This is his fourth year, and we finally got a coach that will come on. Coach Baker's going to be joining us each and every week. It'll be Thursdays. That's just when our schedules match up. But that's fine. you got plenty of time to listen. Uh, I'll usually have these shows out by 2 p.m. on Thursday. Uh, and then you can listen to them Thursday afternoon, Thursday night, or maybe Friday morning, or maybe Friday on the way to the football games. Uh, that's the great things about these. These are bite-sized morsel coaches shows, 15 to 20 minutes. Sometimes maybe go a little longer. Sometimes maybe go a little quicker. Uh, a lot of times it just depends on the week. You'll notice there will be weeks if you listen to some of our shows where you can tell the grind is is, is, is affecting us and we're kind of rushing. Not rushing, but we're kind of getting through the, the shows with, with simple, uh, succinct questions that just get a quick answer and move on. And then there's other ones we like to kind of stretch out and talk and, and all that. And, it's, it, it, and it just depends on what week it is. This is a blast to do. Uh, but when you're doing 20 to 30 of those uh, of these a week, including, you know, interviews and stuff on other people's things, and it, it can grind you down at some points. And, and there's always an ebb and flow to that when it comes to the season. But, hey, right now we're happy to be doing it. Henderson show one and oh, the Lions looking up. It's going to be a tough stretch coming up, but you knew that going in. It's all about getting ready for that district and what a hell of a district it's going to be. And that Kilgore game, you know, not only hanging with Carthage, but legitimately having a chance to beat Carthage. That's a good sign. Now they take on Kil Gilmer uh, and Grant on four, I thinks Gilmer's going to beat Kilgore. I don't, I think Kilgore is going to handle Gilmer and that's nothing against Gilmer. I think Gilmer just is a step back after having a team that's made, uh, you know, state championships and region finals the last few years. Uh, so I think they take a step back, but I also just think that's how good Kilgore is this year. But hey, all that matters for Henderson, 1-0. and We'll talk about that possibility of being 2-0 and next week right here on the Raw Iron Gym of Henderson. Henderson Football Show on the S2S Sports Network, part of L4 Media.